class. This is Alyssa Giannotti. I am here to talk to you about introduction to marketing and sales. Today we will be discussing the history of marketing, marketing management philosophies, and then even more specifically honing in on two of those, which is sales and market orientation. So we're just going to analyze those two, outline them, and then discuss their differences. So let's jump right into the history of marketing. So ever since people have had something to sell, we've been marketing. But the effectiveness of those marketing methods have waxed and waned over thousands of years. And as consumers and their technologies advanced at a more and more rapid pace, marketers have had to change their game. So at one time, Cutting edge technology was limited to just a small segment of the population. And these advancements were slowly rolled out to the masses over decades and honestly, even centuries. So now adoption rates are higher than, or faster than the speed of light and then more widespread than ever. And it's honestly just putting the control back into the hands of the consumers or the people that are purchasing or buying these items. So it's honestly up to the marketers to keep pace in this cluttered, fast-paced world if they want their message heard. So through the lens of marketing, marketing history, we watch how marketers are succeeding and we can see how technology has changed the way marketers do their jobs, how consumers have responded and sometimes in not such a great way, and then where the future of marketing lies. So if we go all the way back to like 1450 to like the 1900, um, that's actually when printed advertising appeared. And that's when Gutenberg invented the movable type. So that allowed for mass printing for the first time ever. So that was 1940. So in the 1730s, magazines first emerged as a medium. And in 1741, the first American magazine was published. And guess where? Philadelphia. So then 1839, posters became popular. And they actually became so popular that they had to be banned on property in London. 1867, that was when the earliest billboards were ever created. And it was actually you just rented the billboard, much like today. So then 1920 to 1949 was the emergence of new mediums. So 1922 is when radio advertising began. So in 1933, um, the percentage of U.S. homes with radios passed the halfway mark. So in 1933, 55.2 people had. Isn't, and so that's 1933. And in 1921, zero people, zero percent had it. So in just a little over a decade, more than half of Americans had radios in their home. 1941 was the first recorded use of television advertising. 1946, telephone household penetration passes the 50% mark. So then let's, now we're shifting to 1950 to 1972. So marketing really grows up during this time period more mediums mediums and that's just different mediums are like modes in which marketing is delivered so your mediums are going to be like the the telephone the television the radio the magazines those are all your different mediums so in 1954 tele, television ad revenue surpasses magazine and radio ad sales so radio ad revenue actually drops nine percent in 1954 <clears throat> and your tv revenues grow from 5% to a total spending of 15% in 1954. Oh, our favorite thing, telemarketing. <laughs> so telemarketing was introduced in 1970. We know how much we love getting those phone calls. 1972 magazines. So for the first time, print media fills the monetary pinch of outbound marketing. So Time Incorporated shuts down Life magazine after 36 years. So your magazines are starting to feel competition from television. So here we have the digital age. So your digital age is 1973 to 1994. 
1973, can we guess what happens? The very first handheld mobile phone call. And then 1981 to 1984 is computers. So IBM introduces the first personal computer. Three years later, in 1984, Apple launches the Macintosh with an epic Super Bowl commercial. So that ad cost $900,000 to make. And it reached 46% of American households. That's a huge reach. So in 1985, print advertising is made even easier with the emergence of desktop publishing and a personal computer. So that led to the explosion of print advertising. So newspaper ad revenue in 1985 was $25 billion. So from 1990 to 1994 is all about cell phones. So 2G, mobile network advancement. So now we're on LTE and 4G. And 2G was the big thing about two decades ago, almost three. So that was your SMS messaging, which arrived in 1992. Can you imagine a world without text messaging? So TV displaces newspaper as the nation's largest ad medium. So it was at 8.3 billion. And then we have the internet. So 1995 to 2002, so it's called the bubble. So new technologies continue to emerge and become adopted by wide audiences. So we know that mobile phones gain popularity as they continue to do. And the internet becomes a viable tool for commerce, opening the doors to an explosion of marketing. So we have search marketing. What would we do without Google? <clears throat> so the very first search engines were actually Yahoo and AltaVista. So it was followed shortly by Ask.com in 1997. So get this. So in December of 1995, 16 million people were using the web. So that's only 0.4 of the population. By December, two years later, 70 million people, which is actually still only 1.7% of the population, but a big jump. So 1995 to 1997 was the first recorded use of the term search engine optimization, which is your SEO. And that's all about your algorithms. So 1998, this is where Google came in. What would we do without Google? And we have 1988, 1998, that blogging emerges, emerges. Now, I mean, now we have an entire almost population of people that are social media influencers and they live purely off of blogging and social media. So we have the age of inbound marketing. So after the dot-com bubble burst, the internet began to enter a new age, which was characterized by a greater emphasis on information sharing, user-centered design, and collaboration. In 2003, we had to fight spam. I think we still do that. But then 2003 to 2004 is when LinkedIn, MySpace, Facebook, all of those things became, became our world. And then to jump ahead, we have Twitter as well as Amazon. So Amazon sales topped $10 billion in 2006. And this rises to $25 billion in 2009. There's no telling where it is today. Yep, and so that takes us to today where we are surrounded by social media, um, e-readers, iPads, online videos, YouTube. We can't even watch a Facebook video without being interrupted by an ad. So we know that we have online shopping, online buyers, and we know that we receive almost all of our information digitally at this point. I don't think that there are many, very many people that still um, subscribe to a news a newspaper or a magazine, especially when you can easily have it at your fingertips on your smartphone, computer, or or tablet. So this takes you to through the history of marketing. The image on the screen here is a very condensed version of what I just shared, but it breaks down the production, the sales, the marketing, and the relationship, and all the different eras. Then I just wanna quickly jump into the different marketing management philosophies. 
So the production orientation focuses on the internal efficiency to achieve lower prices for consumers. So it, it assumes that the price is the critical variable in the purchase decision. Your, your sales orientation assumes that buyers resist purchasing items that are not essential and that consumers must be persuaded to buy. The marketing orientation is based on an understanding that a sales predominantly depends on the customer's decision to purchase a product and on the customer's perception of the value of that product. So responsiveness to customer wants is a critical focus of the, of the marketing orientation. And then the societal marketing orientation holds that a firm should strive to satisfy consumer needs and wants while meeting organizational objectives and preserving or enhancing both individual and society's long-term best interest. So to just kind of break those down a little bit further, your production concept um, just pretty basic. It, it prefers a product that's inexpensive and widely available. So that one, not a whole lot to that one. So low price may attract new customers, but the focus is just on production and not the quality. The product concept works on the assumption that consumers prefer products of greater quality and price and availability doesn't influence their purchase decision. So companies would devote most of its time to developing a product of greater quality, which usually turns out to be expensive. The selling concept is making every possible sale of the product, regardless of the quality or the need. So the main focus here is just to make money. Your marketing concept is um, to work on the assumption that consumers buy products which fulfill their needs. So businesses following the marketing concept conduct research to know about the customer's needs and wants and come out with products to fulfill the same, but normally better than their um, competitors. And then your societal, which is um, the last one I just ran through briefly. So with societal, um, they believe that the business is a part of the society and hence should take part in social services like the elimination of poverty, illiteracy, and controlling explosive population growth. So their needs plus the society first equals better business. So thank you guys for joining me. Here are our sources. I am so happy that we were able to talk through the history of marketing as well as different marketing philosophies. I look forward to speaking with you next week.